Hello, my name is Karen, and I will be discussing developing and documenting outcomes in the Learn Center environment. Information from this presentation was developed during the class Educational Leadership 7200, Analysis of Teaching at Wright State University using Terry Doyle's text, Learn Center Teaching, Putting the Research on Learning into Practice. I will be discussing the importance of creating a roadmap for the classroom, including the importance of Learn Center outcomes, using appropriate teaching mechanisms, and creating a teaching portfolio. The intent of this presentation is for the learner to be able to prepare learning outcomes, employ appropriate teaching interventions to reach predetermined outcomes, and documenting outcomes and activities in a teaching portfolio. The key in most endeavors is planning. Creating a learner center environment is no different. In this environment, teachers must embrace the facilitator role instead of the lecturer role. Being free from the lecture opens up many different educational opportunities for the teacher to use. Learn Center Teaching has a big bag of tricks focused on the needs of the student to create learning opportunities. From developing group learning communities to small discussions to experiential activities, Learn Center Teaching allows for multiple approaches to learning. The first step in planning is to develop the desired learning outcome. Think of a GPS. The GPS needs to know two vital things, current location and desired destination. Once activated, the GPS guides the driver through traffic and terrain as it continues to calculate how to reach the desired goal. When does it know to stop giving directions? When it has reached its destination. Like the GPS, instructors don't know when they have accomplished their goals unless they know what the desired destination is. One of the very first steps of planning is therefore knowing what the desired outcome is. For example, which is a possible outcome for a class about online learning? Option A, for students to be comfortable with online learning tools such as learning management system and computer peripherals. Option B, for students to be able to communicate large amounts of information in an understandable electronic format through web pages and online presentations. Or option C, for students to show up promptly in a physical classroom to receive attendance points. One could argue that both A and B would be appropriate answers to that question. However, C would not necessarily be a good outcome for the class about online learning. The ability to attend a physical classroom is not as important as being comfortable with online learning tools or being able to organize and communicate information electronically. After the overall learning outcomes are developed, the next step for the teacher to do is to create smaller objectives to help reach the outcome. Weekly and daily objectives show the individual steps the class must take. Daily objectives should build on top of each other and progress towards the desired outcome. Objectives should also be smart, as in specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Using these five criteria will form objectives that are easily recognized as being accomplished. Objectives should be comprised of at least three components, a who, an action verb, and a what. Who will be able to do what? For example, in a class about online learning, at the end of the semester, the instructional design for online learning student will be able to create a working professional development website with a summary of course material. The next step in planning Learn Center coursework is to develop appropriate educational interventions that not only match the learning outcomes and daily objectives, but create an effective learning environment. Instead of focusing on lecture, create and plan activities that offer different opportunities to link knowledge with the real-world issues and projects. Authentic learning is the process of implementing knowledge into complex situations that mirror the real world. By using authentic learning approaches to help students transfer new knowledge into action, it puts the emphasis of work back on the students. Neurological research clearly shows that the one that does the work learns the most. In a traditional lecture-based classroom, the teacher is doing the majority of the work, cheating students out of their right to learn. Using small group discussions, role-playing exercises, simulation, case studies, and problem-based activities will help students create the communication, project management, and other skills needed outside of the classroom. These situations should build not only on their basis of knowledge, but also their skills that support real interaction in the professional world. 
There is a strong social component to learning. Basically, students learn better, faster, and more effectively when they have an opportunity to interact with others. Discussions, critiques, and reflection all help students apply new knowledge in a safe environment like the classroom. Teachers should create group activities where students primarily interact with each other. Traditional lecture-based teaching relies heavily on the competence of the teacher, forcing the spotlight on the teacher. Using the learner center teaching approach, students should be doing the work. Teachers can use debate, group projects, guided discussions, and case studies to help put the emphasis back on the students. Some students may be resistant to working in groups due to past group experience. However, the majority of careers that students will have will require effective communication and negotiating skills within a group. The only way they will learn how to handle group dynamics is to practice them. Learning is not a one and done activity. It takes time to learn concepts and it takes many approaches to learn them. Teachers should revisit important concepts throughout the term and keep using them in novel ways to help improve memory. For example, students learning math. Addition and subtraction are not exclusive concepts. Once the basis of how the mathematical operation is learned, these concepts are revisited over and over for years to come in multiple ways. Fourth grade students in the Williamsville School District in Buffalo, New York have a unique opportunity to fulfill the state of New York's required curriculum for environmental sciences. In cooperation with the TIFF Nature Preserve, they study local ecological history and current issues facing the local ecosystem. In the fall, their teacher introduces the concept of the nature preserve and ecology. Students visit the nature preserve and spend the day immersing themselves in local history, identifying artifacts, and learning about the differences in plants. They take a guided tour throughout the nature preserve and discuss the marshy environment. They create small groups to work on different projects with trained facilitators before leaving. Later, the facilitators come to the school with samples of plants so students can observe differences and guide them through a discussion of why invasive plant species are dangerous to indigenous plants. Throughout the year, the students visit the preserve and document changes in the environment while continuing their in-class nature projects. This year-long project not only teaches students about nature, but also improves their observation, communication, and documentation skills. An effective way to create on-the-fly, small group discussions is to use peer instruction. Peer instruction encourages students to reflect on the knowledge and commit to an answer. Then, the students quickly create small groups to discuss their answers and try to convince others of their positions. Instead of just relying on their own internal understanding, they start to put the concept into their own words and convince their peer. It has been proven that students that have just learned a complicated concept are more likely to understand the learning barriers of the person that doesn't understand it than the person that has already mastered the concept, also known as the teacher. For example, when Eric Mazur, professor of pre-med physics at Harvard University, came to Wright State University, he imparted this example. He was teaching a class about the properties of metal when heated and cooled. He told the class that when the metal sheet is heated, the electrons start moving away from each other. He asked the class if they got it and most nodded yes. So he then posed an audience response slide in his lecture with a picture of a metal plate with a hole in it. He then asked the class what happens to the hole. Does the hole increase, decrease, or stay the same when heated? Students reflected on their understanding and answered the question. After polling closed, he did not show the results of the survey. He asked for them to find one or two people with differing answers and discuss. After five minutes, he posed the question again for audience response. There was a dramatic shift in the answers to be the right answer. Mazur proved and has proven many times over that peer instruction impacts learning in a profound way. He notes that the percentage of students that answer correctly the first time should be between 35 and 70 percent for peer instruction to be effective. The Learner Center teaching approach has received negative critiques from administration. It's very hard to walk into a Learn Center classroom and observe one example of this approach and deem it effective. The Learner Center classroom has many nuances that makes it difficult to observe in a small time period. Lectures are shorter, 
group activities are longer and reflection is mandatory. Therefore, document the planning process that you went through. Use your portfolio to map out the class, including teaching methodology, research, syllabi, learning outcomes, daily objectives, lesson plans with activity descriptions, a list of needed resources, and outcome assessment tools. Taking the time to map out these things will not only help administrators understand your classroom, but it also helps the teacher clearly define the roadmap that they will use to help students reach their learning objectives. Students will learn and learn more if you take the time to carefully plan and follow it. Take the time to fully design long-term learning outcomes and daily objectives. Develop authentic learning activities such as hands-on projects, group studies, and problem-based issues to help the student practice new knowledge and skills. Take into account to develop activities that provide an opportunity to repeat application of knowledge and skills. Document these planning process in your teaching portfolio to keep you on track with the plan. It is your map for the year, but it also helps administrators understand your classroom. Thank you for taking the time and listening to my presentation on developing and documenting outcomes, knowing the destination.